Okay, well, welcome. Welcome, viewers. It's been a while since I've done an awesome video. I'm here with my dog, Tika. This is the first edition of the coronavirus videos uh, coming straight to you from the Helbing household. So I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible and get through these notes for you guys. Um, but first, I'd like to kind of give you a visual and set the tone for the class, all right? So I need everyone to just close their eyes. And I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna be making shout outs every class. But today I'm gonna do some shout outs for my B5, okay? So, close your eyes. It's the start of the day. It's, you know, 9.15, the bell just rang. Miss Helbing's outside talking to Miss Smith, having her coffee, telling all the kids randomly in the hallway that it's gonna be a great day today. And she comes into the classroom the announcements are on, nobody's listening. She kicks the doorknob, not the doorknob, Miss Helbing does not kick the doorknob. <laughs> the door stopper, she closes the door, she says, how's everybody doing today? You guys are excited to be here, aren't you? And you guys all just look at me. Um, Bobby has just walked in with his gross green drink. And Colin is studying for a history test. Sam is reading his book. Um, Caitlin's absent, <laughs> so Luke is in the back talking to Kennedy, and, um, Paolo looks absolutely exhausted because he hasn't had coffee today, but little does Paolo know that we're going to be doing some graphing today, and he loves graphing, okay? So, let's kick it into high gear, and let's learn some stuff, because it's been like a hot minute since we've learned anything, okay? So, just so you guys know, in these videos, at any minute, my dogs could, you know, start barking, fighting over a toy, and my children could ask me stuff. It's going to happen. Um, also, if I, I know the sound isn't great, I'm going to work on maybe getting a microphone for tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to remind, text me, or email me. And if you've got any suggestions um, on how I can make my videos better, let me know. Even though, by the time you watch this, I'll probably have already recorded several of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So hopefully you've already um, downloaded these notes. If your printer's not working, at least you're just going through and just watching. This is probably, that might be all you need for a quick review because you have learned most of this stuff um, before. So we're gonna work, this whole unit is on exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So don't worry, I will have my log coloring activity I told you guys we were going to do it. We are still doing a coloring activity, okay? Because everyone loves coloring. Well, not everybody. But, um, okay. So, an exponential function. It's a function where the variable is located in the exponent. So, you've got the general form of your... Where is my... You guys are going to love this. I don't, I'm not going to be complaining about my board. Maybe I'll be complaining about my computer. Um, all right, so the general form of the function is right here, f of x equals a, and then here, b is in parentheses to the x minus h, and then plus k at the end. So we're going to have a horizontal asymptote, just like we would at any transformation, at uh, k. Uh, we'll talk about the domain and the range. Um, let's talk about converging and diverging. So here, converges and diverges. Converge, converge means to come together. So when you have an asymptote and your graph, and your graph is approaching ooh, your asymptote, they're coming together, that's converge. Diverge means here's your asymptote and your graph is going away from it, so it's, um, they're separating, they're coming apart. So they're going in two different directions, so that's why di, di means two. Um, so that's the difference between converging and diverging, and we'll talk about that, uh, what that means for the value of v. I'm sure you guys are scrambling to write this down. If I'm going too fast, you can always just pause. Um, so I'm kind of expecting that so I can get through these notes as quickly as possible. So here's how to graph an exponential function. Um, so you're gonna start, really all you need are two points. Okay, zero, one, because zero, if you're thinking of uh, equals just a basic exponential, um, sorry, 2, your base is 2 to the x. 
think about what that means. If I plug in a zero there for x, two to the zero power, anything to the zero power is gonna be one. That's where this point comes from, zero, one. Now if I plug in a one here, just the next easy point, two to the one is two. That's the base. So the next point is one comma the base, or um, for decay, let's look at that in just a minute. Um, does this work? No, it doesn't. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm not going to complain about my computer yet. Yet is the key word there. All right, so here. Now, I know you don't have this in your notes, but I just want to show you what I was talking about. If I plug in 0 for x, then I, b to the 0 power is 1, so that's where 0, 1 comes from. And if I plug in 1 for my exponent, I get b. So there's 1b. So those are the two basic points. Now, if your b boom, is a fraction between 0 and 1, when you plug in your 0 for your exponent, again, anything to the 0 power is 1, so you still have that point 0, 1. However, if I plug in a 1 for x, I'm going to get a fraction for my b. I don't really want to graph a fraction. So to avoid that, I'm going to plug in negative 1. Because then this, I can, uh, negative 1 will be my x, and my y will be the reciprocal of that fraction, which is a whole number 2. So, come on now. There we go. So that's why we've got these points here, 0, 1, and 1b. Um, or for decay, we've got, still have 0, 1, and we have negative 1, and then 1 over b. Okay? So, again, if that was too quick, you can go back and watch it again, or you can press pause. So let's see if we can't uh, graph. One of my children just woke up. Okay, so graph the exponential function. And so all we're going to do is we're going to find those two points, and then we're going to uh, move it around um, using transformations and then draw our asymptote and that's it. Um, okay, and after we do a few of these, it's going to get much easier. So my original two points are for, for A here are 0, 1, and then 1, the base here is 3. So 1, 3. Okay, now my A is this number right here, 2. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply my y values by that 2. Because I know when I plug in 0 for x, now n not looking at the transformations, we'll do those afterwards, I'm going to have to at some point multiply those y values by 2. So 0, instead of plotting 0, 1, I'm going to plot 0, 2, and 1, 3. I'm going to take that 3 and multiply it by 2, and I'll get 6. Okay, now those points for 0, 2, maybe I should erase these. Yes. Let's plot these in a different color. 0, 2, and 1, 6. Okay, those are kind of our starting points. Now, I rewrote 2 minus x as, here's the, where am I at? This is why, this is why I don't like videos where you can't see me. I use a lot of body language when I'm teaching here. Okay, so this negative, if I basically factor out this negative, you can see this is a negative, and in parentheses, the quantity x minus 2. So this negative tells us that we're going to have a reflection over the y-axis. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take these two points. When I reflect those over the y-axis, and here's the y-axis in green, What's going to happen? Well, the first point, 0, um, there we go. Oh, no, no. Okay. Um, we'll do these in maroon color. This first point, 0, 2, is going to stay where it's at. And this one is going to still reflect. Okay. So now we reflect it over the y-axis because of this negative for the exponent. And now all we have to go do is our horizontal shift and our vertical shift. So we're going to go right 2 and down 5. And we've done this a billion times this year, so I don't feel like I need to explain that too much. So if we go right 2 because of x minus 2 and down 5, so using maybe yellow, 
break two. One, two, and then going down five. One, two, three, four, five. There's my landing point, red. Okay, and then the other one, down, or sorry, right two. Down one, two, three, four, five. Red, landing point. Now, where's our asymptote? Our asymptote is in gray at negative five. And you can draw your asymptote first if you'd like. It's all personal preference. And maybe in green, I'll just draw my graph. Now, so, uh, now really all we have on this graph is this asymptote and these two red points. So I'm just going to connect them. Ooh. Not great. Okay, a little squiggle there on the line, but that's okay. All right. That's it. Okay, we'll do domain and range in a second. Let's go to the second one, B. So now we've got 0, 1, and negative 1, 3. Um, I usually don't rewrite those points because I'm noticing the leading coefficient is we just got a negative, which tells you, just like in a quadratic, if you've got a negative in front, it's going to flip the whole graph over the x-axis. So I'm going to start with these points, and I'm just going to reflect them over the x-axis down here. Okay, and then what do we have to do? We just have to shift left one and up two. Left one, up two. That's it, that's all there really is to it. Okay, where's our asymptote? Our asymptote is at two. Okay. Um, so graph is in green. Okay. Now, domain. The domain for both of these graphs is negative infinity to positive infinity because we can plug in any x value we want. Okay, but the range, the range in A, the lowest value, we go from low to high, right? is negative 5, not including negative 5 because that's an asymptote, up to infinity. And this one, the graph is below the um, asymptote. So we're going to start low, so it goes from negative infinity up to, but not including the asymptote, which is at 2. Okay, so it's asking us, all right, what are the asymptotes? All right, just make sure you don't write the number, just make sure you write, when you're writing an asymptote, an x or a y. So this asymptote, these are horizontal, so these are going to be y equals negative 5, and this is y equals 2. So both of these graphs are approaching the asymptote, so that means they converge. And you guys are doing awesome! Moving on. Okay, so practice some more. Okay. So we go from 0, 1 to, now we've got an A that's a 1 half. It's a negative 1 half. You want to throw the negative in there at the same time so we don't have to flip the points in a second um, step? Let's do that. So let's multiply this 1 by negative 1 half. And that's a little too Okay. And then this 4 by uh, negative 1 half, which makes it negative 2. All right, so, ooh, I already have a plot them there. Zero, negative one half, and then one, negative two. All right, so now all we have to do is we've got a negative right here, right, for the coefficient, which means we're going to reflect over the y-axis. I should probably write that down. Reflect over, come on now. And then we're going to go, what, right three and down one? Okay, so from there, reflecting over the y-axis. So that point is going to stay. That point is going to move 
here. And then all we have to do is right three and down one. Right three. Acetope is at negative one. Perfect. Graph. Beautiful. All right, last one. Zero, one to zero, three, one, two, one, six. Oh, all we've got to do here is go right four. Yeah, right four up two, right? Okay, and then right four, two, three, four. Two. Okay, asymptote. We got two. Graph. All right, so we finally got one that diverges. All right, this one definitely diverges. This one converges. So we've got a, an asymptote of y equals negative one and y equals two. Our domains are always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Functions. And the range here starts low. Because uh, we do a reflection over the x-axis. Um, and I'm sorry, no, because we're opening down, right? So this is negative infinity over up to, but not including, negative 1. And this is from the asymptote to 2 infinity. Okay, good times. So I want you to pause right now. Okay, go get the best food in your house, right? Like Pop-Tart whatever your mom's leftovers are in the kitchen, you know, whatever, and then bring it back here, do the you tries and eat the food and pretend like I gave you that food and you're in class right now, right? Like the classroom is dark. We've got um, the Christmas lights are on, right? Um, and Ms. Helming is walking around the classroom, making sure everyone's doing work, even though not everybody's doing work, right? Because we all know what Catherine's doing up front. She's, she's doing her history. Okay, so, um, you know, let's keep it real here. All right, so if anyone needs help, ask Paolo because he, uh, he can help you. All right, so press pause, do the you tries, check your answers, see if you've got any questions. I think you guys are probably okay. Let's move on to base of E. And these are virtually the, sa virtually the same, okay? The only difference is... That e is an actual, it's an irrational number, okay, it's like pi, um, that occurs in nature, and you're going to have to have that definition memorized next year. Um, however, you don't need to know that for now. All you need to really know is that e is approximately 2.71, okay? So if, you're, if you have e to the x, the graph, and I drew it over to the left here, okay, um, if you plug in zero for the exponent, anything to the zero power is one, so we still have the point zero, one. And if we plug in one for the x, we get one is x and y is going to be 2.71. So we're going to be using those two points for e to the x, zero, one, and one, and then we usually just use 2.7. So you can see the graph of e to the x here, your parent function looks like that. Now, if you have a coefficient, if the, if the, co if the coefficient of x is negative, this is different, um, um, when the leading coefficient is negative, the function ends up converging, and this, is, this ends up being a reflection over the y-axis. All right, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. All right, let's do some graphs. Okay. So,
So, moving on. Example two. All right, so graphing the natural base function y equals e to the x. All right, so here I've got my little chart here. Go ahead and fill that in. I've got my two points, 0, 1, and 1, 2.7. Okay, now all we have to do for a is we're going to go left 1 and down 4, and that's it, right? So plot your two points. Go left 1 and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom! Okay. Left 1. Down 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and that's... When you're graphing 2.7, you know, it's just... An, you do the best you can. You look, ah, oh, this is about 2.7. It's pretty close to 3. So just graph it. All right, your y... Um, your asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 4. Okay, graph, boom, done. And this one is just got a couple of extra steps. So we've got 0, 1, and then 1, 2.7. If I multiply that 1 by my leading coefficient, negative 2, that's going to be 0, negative 2. And then 1, 2.7 becomes 1, and then negative, and about negative 5.4. Okay? So asymptotes at 3. I'll go ahead and graph that now. Because I feel like it. Okay? Alright. So now... Oh, I've already graphed them. 0, negative 2, and then 1, negative 5.4. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to go right for up three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So flipping easy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. that easy to draw on here. Okay. So, for these two, we've got domains, negative infinity to positive infinity, and our range is negative 4 to infinity. Our range here is negative infinity, negative infinity to 3, because we always go low to high. So our asymptotes are at negative 4 and at 3. And this one, no, they both diverge, right? Diverge, diverge. All right. Try the U try. Then check your work. And we're going to move on. Oh, I love these. Okay. So. These are fun. I guess if you like algebra. All right. So to solve this, we got 3 to the, an exponent of x plus 1. Well, wouldn't it be great if I could make the right side of the equation with the same base? Then I can just take away, like here, I can just take away the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. So 81 is a bunch of 3s, isn't it? Because it's 9 times 9. So that's, if I rewrite this as 3 to the x plus 1, and this is 3 to the 4th, well, that just means that x plus 1 equals 4, so x is 3. Done. Okay, they get a little bit more complicated, and you have to know some, um, you know, exponential rules from Algebra 1. But, you know, it's okay. All right, let's rewrite these. Uh, e to the negative x squared, okay, equals. Now, when you multiply exponents, or when they're on top of each other, they multiply, right? So e to the 2x times, now this is equal to e to the negative 3. So now we've got exponents with the same bases. So when you multiply same bases, like if I had x squared times x cubed, that's the same as x to the 2 plus 3, which is x to the 5, right? So we're going to add those exponents. So, shoot, 
okay, it's fine. Everything's fine. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as e to the negative x squared equals e to the 2x minus 3. Now, I can set negative x squared equal to 2x minus 3. And I'm going to move my x squared to the right so it becomes positive. And that's an easy factoring of x minus 1, x plus 3, which gives us x values. Of what? Why? Okay. Of x equals 1 and negative 3. Alright, so C. Oh, I forgot to get it done. Okay. So if I change my 4 to a 2 squared and I change my 8 uh, to a 2 cubed, then you have to distribute. Right? And those are multiplied. That becomes a 2x plus 2, not 2x plus 1. Equals 6x, solve, you get x is a half. All right, try the u tries, and then check your answers. Now, this is a 1, because we're setting the exponents equal to each other, right? Boom. All right, that's it. Enough for now, signing out. Make sure you click like and subscribe. I think I have like 68 followers on YouTube now, so I'm really going to... Uh, now I gotta work on getting this video on YouTube. So I gotta go. Alright. You guys have the best day. Okay, bye.